Um, first, thanks to the organizers and the chairs for the invitation to speak here today. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about uh, siRNA um, and the potential impact for sustained suppression of S antigen and um, the immune uh, potential immune activation associated with that suppression. So, so we, we started this program in Hepatitis B Cure with some basic principles, right? So one is that, in fact, you had to do three major things. One is reduce um, HBV DNA replication as much as possible. Um, the second was to reduce S antigen load with the assumption that S antigen is playing an important role in the immune exhaustion that one is experiencing. And third, um, in, you know, sort of boost the host's immune response, ultimately with a combination to, to achieve functional cure. So I'm going to tell you about what we've been doing in the, the aspect of immune, um, <clears throat> uh, excuse me, of S antigen uh, um, uh, reduction of, uh, by siRNA. So uh, we've been looking at this molecule called Induceran, uh, formerly known as AB729. It is a liver-targeted galnac conjugate siRNA. It's a single trigger, so single trigger meaning that it's a single double-stranded oligonucleotide that, that is able to uh, cut basically all transcripts coming from hepatitis B uh, virus genome. Um, it inhibits all uh, repli uh, replica uh, products, uh, including um, S antigen coming from integrated transcripts. It has uh, broad genotype coverage, and it has this long uh, duration of activity uh, with a single subcutaneous dose. Now, one of the things we learned about this sort of long duration of effect is, is in a particular animal model. So in the AAV mouse model, we wanted to see was, um, is, it, is it the PK of the siRNA that, that resides for a long period of time in the liver that uh, sustains the, the, um, the S antigen suppression, or is it something else, or is it the risk complex? And so we did a study where it looked at at uh, looking at the loading of ARGO2, which is part of the risk complex, and actually came to the conclusion that it's not simply PK, but what's happening is the siRNA loads into the risk complex, and, and it's the, um, the magnitude of that loading of risk complex that determines the, the drop in S antigen, um, and that the de degradation of that risk complex ultimately you know, demonstrates the, the um, uh, rebound of that that observation. So how does this translate to the clinic? So this molecule was taken into the phase one clinical development and uh, looked at in a number of cohorts, looking at, <clears throat> at 60 milligrams or 90 milligrams, either in four weeks, eight weeks, or 12 weeks in either e antigen positive or e antigen in negative patient populations. And what you see is a fairly consistent 1.8 to 2 log decline in S antigen after 48 weeks. Of, of treatment, and that S antigen level uh, um, uh, mean S antigen levels remain pretty pretty much below baseline levels at week 48 follow up. So a fairly consistent uh, observation across all cohorts, across all dose and dose duration levels, that you get this reduction and sustained suppression over time. What you also observe here is that 33 of the 41 patients had S antigen less than 100 international units at some point during the trial, and that there were two patients actually in cohort K that reached S antigen below the limit of quantitation. Um, we decided also to see what would happen if we removed all therapy, including nucleoside therapy, from this, from this patient population. So nine patients consented to, to the nuke discontinuation. Uh, protocol and the protocol shown here where ALT is less than two times the upper limit of normal, undetectable HBV DNA, E antigen negative, and S antigen less than 100 international units at two consecutive uh, visits. And so this is what you see. We were very interested, uh, certainly from the very beginning, is understanding uh, an immune profiling of, of these patients. And can we correlate uh, S antigen levels with some kind of immune response that we're seeing that's positive. And so the patients that consented, um, you know, we were able to get the PBMCs and actually show uh, some fairly interesting observations here. So what you see here is, okay, is this okay? what you see here is this is uh, S antigen reduction in the blue, the green is ALT uh, 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 elevation, and you see in the sort of gold bars, you see HBV interferon gamma uh, levels. 
And so what you see here is, is as the S antigen declines, you get a mild, very mild uh, ALT elevation, um, and then you begin to see some kind of immune reconstitution potentially happening in each of these patients, some more than others. In addition, what you'll also be able to see is a reduction in global exhausted T cells uh, in these three patients. So what does this, the, the observation that interferon gamma increases, the sort of the immune activation increases, what you can see, there are two basic profiles. You see essentially one profile where, where the activation appears or interferon gamma production appears to occur at the S antigen nadir um, or at uh, soon after in follow-up uh, of, of these patients. So basically two, two distinct profiles for, for these patient population. So when you look at not, the nine patients that discontinued uh, nucleoside therapy as well as the uh, siRNA therapy, um, <clears throat> you, you observe a couple of interesting uh, things here. One is that, in fact, the S antigen stays pretty low uh, for, for a very long extended period of time, um, pretty much below the 100 international units. You, you occasionally see a, a, a spike in HBV DNA that's not associated with a in increase in S antigen levels. Um, and some of these uh, 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 HBV DNA levels resulted in, in nuke retreatment, not in this particular patient because they weren't on, on retreatment uh, protocol, but in fact, the, the other patient was, you know, had to be retreated because their HBV DNA um, increased above the, the limit uh, that was set. But what you also see is the HBV DNA in, in many of these patients, actually that when you see these spikes, uh, actually returns to baseline without any further intervention. So that, that begs the question is, is, are you having some level of immune activation occurring that's beginning to control the virus in, this, in these particular patient populations? So with that, that sort of uh, observation with this particular uh, siRNA that we saw, actually very good suppressive levels of S antigen that are fairly well sustained over extended periods of time. Um, we see this immune reconstitution, uh, or at least <clears throat> appearance of immune reconstitution happening uh, with, these, with the patients that were able to stop nucleoside therapy. The next question is, what would happen if you add an immune activation component? So you, you may have some immune activation coming just with the siRNA. That's obviously not sufficient enough to drive to functional cure in these patients, but what happens when you now begin uh, bringing in an immune activation component? And, and that's shown here. So there are two clinical trials that are currently underway. Obviously, um, the one I think Ellie uh, Barnes uh, spoke about this morning, a collaboration with Vasitech. Uh, and now they're called Brinthus, by the way. They're rebranded their company. Um, so VTB300, which is the therapeutic vaccine, um, comes in after a 24-week uh, dose of, of Inducerin, so the siRNA. You bring the, um, the uh, VTB300 uh, dose of, of Inducerin, so the siRNA. You bring the, um, the uh, VTB300, uh, comes in, prime boost, and then you follow up the patients to see what's happening. So this particular arm of the study here will be presented, this data will be presented uh, at ASLD this week in a late breaking poster. And there we will also describe some immune activation uh, analysis on, on these patient population. The study that, that uh, I think Ellie referred to in her, with this NEBO combination, which is another arm of the study, um, this, this data will not really report out till, till actually next year. And then there's the interferon component, so where we reduce antigen load first and then bring in um, uh, interferon alpha. Uh, and that, that some of that data was reported out earlier in EASL. So finally, uh, in conclusion, um, so AB729 treatment uh, produced robust and comparable declines in S antigen regardless of dose, dose duration, or baseline E antigen or HBV DNA status. S antigen declines in most subjects persisted for at least a year after the last dose. Um, this continuation of all therapy 
uh, in HPV-treated subjects who achieved S antigen lower than 100 international units has led to continued low levels of HPV DNA and S antigen in most subjects. No ALT flares have been observed. Um, the results suggest, we believe, maybe ongoing host immune control in the absence of therapy. And these patients are going to be continue to be observed for the next three years or so. Um, immune profiling appears to show HPV-specific immune reactivation occurring in some patients. And as I said, you know, some uh, additional uh, new data on the triple combination with uh, VTV300 therapeutic vaccine will be shown at uh, ASLD uh, this coming week. So thank you.